Hello everyone and welcome to another Monster Hunter video. So I did mention in my previous video that I was going to be starting my next guide on uh, just regular baseball Kana from the USJ Shine On Forever quest. However, that mission only took like two minutes for me to kill the Vulcana and I basically just headlocked it into oblivion. So there's really that really not that much of a guide on fighting Vulcana itself since I know most characters or most people can just throw on the Rock City, throw on a Temporal Mantle, even without endgame gear, kind of just ZSD Vulcana to death, and it's that mu not that much of a problem. Uh, so instead, I decided to fight through what I said I wasn't going to do, and I just instead went straight on to Arc Tempered Vulcana, something that I know a lot of people will probably struggle with, especially with the Switch Axe. I spent, honestly, hours, way too long, trying to relearn how to fight this monster, to get a satisfactory showing to where I can actually show you guys some half decent gameplay in my opinion where I'm not just carding every five seconds to AT Vulcana. This monster is a lot more difficult than I remembered but that's probably because I was carried by a bunch of party members uh, or other weapons that have a lot easier time with Arct Arctember Vulcana. I'm going to say it right now, Switch Axe does not have a fantastic time against AT Vulcana. You do have a lot of distinct damage openings but you do have to wait a long time. They're not big damage openings. And uh, if you do want to force yourself to go through the AT Vulcana fight with the Switch Axe, just be prepared for a long slog. This fight is not easy, and it is very long. So, yeah, just be prepared for that. So because this fight is so long, it ends up being, about, I think, about like an 11-minute kill. Um, I'm not going to let this whole thing play out and then do commentary afterwards. That's just going to take too long. So what I am going to do is let it play and then I'll stop and give commentary during the video instead. That way we don't have an hour long video on why I don't think you should do AT Vulcana with Switch Axe. <laughs> anyway, that being said, let's get right into the video. Okay, I... Yeah, so I know I just selected like a Rathian quest, but I have a... Uh... I have something up open in Cheat Engine where it allows me just to force a quest, just so I don't have to go to the events quest, place a specific quest, etc. We're just forcing AT Vulcana every single time. And as you can see, I'm not in the Gathering Hub. Uh, I'm actually in the Elder's Recess. And there's a specific reason why I'm forcing the quest from this camp. It's a little speedrun trick. Um, and you'll notice it right here in about like five seconds. And so you'll actually see that I spawn in the camp, like on the ground and not flying in from the Windrake. If you leave from any other place that's not the Elder's Recess at this camp, you will fly in with the Windrake. Cost a couple seconds. If you do the if you launch the quest from the camp, you're just going to show up on the ground. You get a little bit of a head start. Not relevant, but just pointing out as to why I did it. It was just common practice back in the day. I'm also not bringing my Palica with me as I normally don't. It just messes with Monster AI way too much. Um, if you do feel like you want to bring your Palico with you, I would just suggest eating for Feline Provoker or hoping that you get Feline Provoker if possible, just to, to draw the aggro so that it's more controlled. Here I'm using Power X mode because, uh, I'm just getting Power X mode right now just because AT Vulcana's head thresholds to force claggers, flinches, and knockdowns are very, very high and you need to hit multiples of them. So any help to part break thresholds is obviously very very welcome and a lot of the damage openings in this fight in uh anyway are done usually with axe mode you get a lot of wild morphs in this fight not a very sword based uh like a not you don't get a lot of openings to fight with sword that you can't do with safer with axe mode so that's just something to point out Uh, one thing before we get too carried into it, uh, it's no if you are going to bring your Rock Steady and Temporal Mantle into the AT Vulcana fight, unlike just regular Vulcana, you can't ZSD spam AT Vulcana. They understood their mistake after uh, introducing regular Fatalis. A bunch of people picked up Switch Axe and Tool Specialist Secret, started ZSD spamming. If you latch on and start as if you latch on to Vulcana while you have a Rock Steady or a Temporal Mantle active, um, in the case of Rock Steady, 
it will you'll take two hits of rock steady it'll fling you off pin you and it'll pin you to the ground and if you get and like usually they'll die to any follow-up hits since like that will also deal like about about half hp and at Volcana hits extremely hard uh, if you have a temporal mantle, what will happen is it'll eat through the entire thing, then fling you off and pin you, thus resulting in a death like anyway, or at least you'll probably get frame trapped uh, into a death anyway. So highly recommend not taking a temporal mantle. I don't I, rock steady is fine. Just be careful. You might cart steady, as we call it. But I take rock steady and evasion mantle. Um, but you, you definitely can still ZSD a Volcano, you just need to know what the openings are, and I'll explain them as we go further. So, one, another thing, if you want to find your damage opening right here. After Volcana does like a fly up and a skew, like a, a forward skewer towards you, she'll do like a mini, uh, like a mini growl. But let me see if I can get it right. I don't want to skip too far by accident. You'll hear the growl after the after the little skewer. You'll hear it. Yeah, so she kind of growled right here. After that skewer into growl, she will always stay in the air and do like a downward ice puke, and that'll have like the rings that spread that spread outwards. Every time, it, it is like an every time kind of thing. So that is one one opening that that is one opening that is really big for us. Me using what I call the slinger tech. You pull out your slinger with sword with sword mode, and then you can like let go and immediately hop, and you can buffer your iframes with evade window five. You can dodge a lot of things. It's also a really quick way just to get access to a quick hop and stay relatively in position. You don't have to like hop, walk back, hop, roll in, reposition yourself. It's super. It's a super easy tech that a lot of people should know how to do if they're going to fight AT Valkana to get like these kind of punishes. You don't need to do it, but it does help a lot to force some openings. See, I'm playing very careful, even on that little like Dragon Dash. Uh, you you can't really go for big openings like this, or like can't really go for big openings in general. It's a very slow, methodical gameplay in this particular weapon versus monster matchup. That's another opening, by the way. Uh, let me back it up ten seconds. Uh, okay. I don't know why this is happening. Okay, there we go. So after this dragon death, so Valkana will like stab into the ground and do like a sweep. And she'll guarantee do a grounded ice peak onto the ground. So you could be ready for that too. This the stab is coming in right now, and then she'll sweep around. Guaranteed ice puke. So knowing that you can get out of the way, this is actually a guaranteed ZSD opener. Because after this downward ice puke, she will always re uh, leer back onto her hind legs and cause like ice hail. So you can almost always guarantee a ZSD or a half ZSD. If you want, you can go for the full ZSD finisher, possibly cause a flinch. But uh, a lot of the time, I like to hang on for as much as I can. And then if she starts a dragon dash, that might pin me off. I just let go early. You'll never get hit. Or if I'm really feeling ballsy, I'll just do the full thing and just yellow it. But yeah, this is this ice puke guaranteed ZSD Punisher, and also because AT Valkana doesn't flinch very often or clagger very often, there's not a lot of good opportunities to wound AT Valkana. So you can also use this grounded ice puke as an opportunity to wound if you don't get a clagger available to you. She'll stand up and hail. So I went for the full for the full finisher. I'm definitely more than willing to take this little dragon dash. It does about maybe a fifth of my HP, maybe a bit more. I'm totally content taking this because it, you do have health augment. You don't do a lot of damage, but only a couple. It only takes a couple of pokes on the switch axe to heal up a majority of this. I do recommend taking a lot of uh, ancient potions or max potions with this fight, since there will be a huge amount of opportunities where you are running around and just not doing anything against AT Vulcana, and you'll need to heal up sometimes. Okay, she just did a skewer into a little growl, guaranteed downward ice puke. So right here, I know that she's going to face downwards. 
I'm already going to get ready up and swing a wild morph at her. I'm already ready. Groundward stab this is going to be... She's going to be on the ground and do an ice puke. Guaranteed ZSD opening. And because I got on so early, I'm just going to go for the full thing here, I believe. Okay, maybe not. Not to be confused, so that was a triple tail stab, but the third one was a stab and then a sweep. That, like, don't get confused with that sweep, with the sweep, with uh, the ice peak one. That is not, just because she does that sweep right there, does not mean it's going to be a guaranteed ice puke. So, just be careful that even when she does the tail sweeps, is you need to figure out which tail sweep it is. And it just takes some practice to learn how to get, to distinguish which ones. Here, I'm pretty low. I should actually have an, use an ancient potion right now. Uh, just, in, just in case, because I know like things have been going so wrong. I'm actually playing on tilt right now. I'm really frustrated with this fight, so I honestly should use an ancient potion right now. And I do just that. When Velcana, when AT Velcana like does like a stab and like jumps super far away from you, like when Velcana's really far away, the AI almost always goes into this roar and then a huge sweeping arc beam around you. That move is kind of free, like it's, if you have evade window 3, you can just go through the beam, but you can also just run at Velcana. Like, it's pretty safe. You can wild morph that, like that, that move, but like you're gonna get hit a lot on the arm and not actually like hit Velcana's head very much. So, and because you don't get a lot of sword hits in this matchup, or at least it's hard to find those opportunities, I just opt for, to go for them, just to get as much damage as I can out of, out of my openings when I can. Another downwards puke. Decided to get some sword hits in. I got my clagger. Recognizing that I'm already about two minutes into the fight, I'm just gonna go for another wound since I don't get a lot of opportunities to. I seen the opportunity to try and hit the rocks, I ended up missing. A little slinger tech hop right there. This, this roar, this, that roar right there. That's a wild morph opening right there. So we get the evasion mental proc. We get a big wild morph here. We delay the animation so we can get the hop last second. You see, I'm making big use of those Slinger Tech Hops right now, so just stay, to stay on Velcana's tail and stay very aggressive towards uh, towards her. What That's one thing that makes it so good on the Switch Axe, because multiple weapons could do that too. But the Switch Axe, because it's forward and back hop, are, the distance is very uh, small. It means that your character actually gets to land sooner and is more actionable sooner, while still maintaining the, the maximum amount of iframes that you would from a regular hop. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that's one thing that I really like about the Slinger Tech Hop that I always call it. I'm always just going to say Slinger Tech from now on. But just so that you know. So I should have been ready for this Ice Puke ahead of time, I think. Okay, I don't know why it's not playing. Come on. Come on. Yeah, so this is the... Come on. We get the guaranteed ZSD. I definitely should have ZSD'd there, but I ended up taking a wound. I probably just got lost in the moment. Go for that big wild morph. So this is what normally, this is just like a regular topple. So AT Belkana doesn't topple like this all the time, whereas regular Belkana does. So you really gotta make the most of the situation while it's down. Unfortunately, I don't have an amp sword. So, I can't... It's just a really unfortunate situation to be in, since I know Velcana's not going to be down like this a lot. So, it's just an unfortunate situation. If you do have an Amp Sword, you should definitely uh, do max DPS combo here, but I don't think I can. Yeah, I just go for a basic Amp combo. Oh, I'm still a bit to fit a max DPS combo in here. What do you know?
Yeah, you notice that uh, I wasn't able to fit in a whole combo there. I'm just going forward and then a left and then an instant transform. Switch X has a lot of these it, like super easy uh, punishes that you can get, but they're not very big and they're not a lot of damage. It also doesn't help that AT Belkana has three different stages. There's Zero Aura, there's Aura 1, Aura 2, and Aura 3. And you can reduce these Aura levels by applying Elder Seal. It's a mechanic that I used to know about along with some of the other speedrunners that use it for a special Aura top rule in speedruns. I don't really re know that much about it. But as the Aura level increases, and I'll give you some pointers how you can tell in which stage that you're in, um, Valkana, uh, AT Valkana actually gets damage reduction. Uh, so you'll start doing less damage, which is another reason as to why this fight starts taking, or takes so long. Is that you take, uh, Valkana, I believe, gets up to 20% damage reduction in stage 3, and I think 15-ish percent in stage 2, and Switch Axe often has to fight Valkana the most in stage 2. So just keep in mind that like you're basically fighting AT Valkana with 15% less damage the entire time. Uh, so even like the, like the, sneaking in any amount of hit does matter, but it's also feels kind of shitty because it's not a lot of damage. Getting the evasion mantle proc. Using the upward rise slash from uh, Switch Axe, you're able to snipe snipe the head a lot, and I think you'll see me do that quite a bit, just to like snipe any extra stray axe hits on the head as much as I can. Again, trying to contribute as much of the head as possible to get those. Claggers, flinches, and those special topples. No indicator to signal this downwards ice puke, but you do have to just be ready to be in the right situation at the right time for the punish. I actually think I take this. Yeah, I take this opportunity to drop the boulders, and I I miss, but. It would have been a lot of damage. More damage than I could have done if I just dropped off and did it myself. Or did my own combo. Okay, so as we approach later into this fight, uh, you'll know that you're in Aura 2. Uh, I'll, 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 just, I'll just wait. So, yeah, I'll just, I'll just wait. Until we see it. So he's got the skewer, downward ice puke. Dragon dash. Ice puke. So if you miss a clutch claw, you can still get this punish. You can even get the punish without any mantle on at all. Uh, and I got hit by one I got hit by the yeah, ice hail. I get lucky again. You don't get a lot of ZSDs in this matchup, so you want to take every single one that you can. I go for a half one. Hmm. You see, because I got roared, I can no longer get a punish on this landing. I can only get a small punish here. Triple tail stab. You see I'm getting that snipe in with the rising slash. Going for another wound. Uh, a bit greedy on my part. No need for me to roll in there. I just wait out the ice thing. I don't want to get hit. Guaranteed ice puke. And I'm being a dummy. Got hit for it. That's the ice sweep. Skewer but no roar. That equals no... I mean equals just a landing. Ice puke after this after the the grounded sweep. So right there, you'll see that I latched on. I couldn't ZSD because I didn't have the full thing. But latching on and jumping off that actually waits out the entire uh, the ice puke because the ice puke starts as a small area and then grows outwards. But it does lose its hitbox after a while. You'll see that uh, this is actually a really good punish for great sword users. They can actually. Uh, you do like a, a regular slap into Slinger Shot into a, a true charge slash right here. 
Uh, and it's a really good punch for great sword. So actually what I end up doing right here is because I don't have a ZSD, I clutch on, let go, and use this as an opportunity to amp my sword. Since I know that Ice Hill's gonna come down, I can just get a couple extra amp sword hits. Or hits to amp my sword. Use a Slinger Tech Hawk. Just getting small hit combos. She did a dragon dash relatively at a at a relative pretty far distance, not like anything like super short. So you can safe when when Volcano starts running away from you, you can almost just safely assume that it's that she's going to go for a huge ice sweep. So you should just always like run towards her. But Volcano does do like a sort of dragon dash side to side sometimes. That usually only happens when she's like not agitated or like super early on into the fight. At this point, I don't really ever expect AT Valkana to ever start doing that again. I just always assume she's going to do this big arcing sweep. Her ice sweep moves, by the way, her ice beams, those are like, if you're going to get hit by anything, uh, it should not be that. Like, those ice sweeps in particular do huge, massive, insane amount of damage. It's like, from full HP to nearly to where the start of my name is, those are like, you do not ever want to get hit by those. Okay, so you'll see how the camera panned out like this, and so she's doing this huge, like, rearing thing again. So this is actually a move that she only ever does in Aura 3. This is, like, Arc Temper Valkana's, like, Supernova move, or Big Nova move. So this is how you tell that you were in Phase 3. And, uh, actually, AT Volcano will only do this when she's going to leave Aura 3 level. Because after she does this, she actually de-escalates back down to, I believe, Aura 1. And then she goes Aura 2, Aura 3. Then she'll do this again, Aura 1, Aura 2, Aura 3. Um, so yeah, just like this is this is what the, the move is going to look like. And so when you see the camera pan out like this and she starts doing this, it's actually the safest place to be here is just right underneath her. And you get to, and so what you could do is give you a, a Wet Fish Fin Plus, you get a Guarantee Free Sharpen. And that's like the only Sharpen you'll need for like the rest of the rest of the hunt. Assuming you're using a uh, True Razor Sharp or if you have like Master's Touch. That should be the only time you ever need to sharpen, but if you ever see it, opportunity to sharpen. She'll always do this like big like ice sweeping effect like across everywhere, but again, she'll never hit underneath her. And then after that, she'll like jump up and do a downwards ice puke, which we all know after the, after we've done finish sharpening, downward ice puke, free punish. So just keep that just to show you. I got my sharpen, downward ice puke. I got a heavy slam, and then conveniently, the extra damage from the thing gave me a topple, so I got very lucky there. So, so right here, I'm kind of running around. I'm actually like pretty scared because because Valkana does have some moves that if I commit to something, that she she could just like oh she can quickly do a dragon dash at me, hit me for it. She can tail stab me. Uh, she could start like an ice puke, and if I'm in the wrong spot, I might get hit by it. So I'm just sitting here. I'm patiently waiting. I don't want to be the first to have to commit to the first to the first move. I just want to sit and react to whatever she's doing and punish what she does. So I'm just sitting here and reacting. Just because, again, like the Switch Axe, well, it does have some pretty quick moves. It, everything is still a commitment because then you have to do... You, every, everything that Switch Axe has is a commitment, regardless of how good you are. So a good hunter will know when it when uh, it is safe to do something and when it is not safe to do something. And so I'm choosing to forego the opening because I was a little bit scared. I didn't want to get caught up in a Switch Axe animation. I can also see that she's no longer agitated, so I'm also looking for an opportunity to get some free damage this way. There's gonna be a log sweep.
Okay, so Volcano's gonna be leave now. So Volcano's gonna leave right now. Uh, obviously, as you can tell, so the, my map went white, so she's about to leave. Um, usually, whenever I fought her, she's been probably around. I'm just taking a guess, anywhere between like 30 to 20 ish percent HP. AT Volcano will come to go to sleep in this area around like 20 to 25 percent HP. I can't exactly remember off the top of my head. Uh, just a fun fact for you. So if you never end up getting getting ready to sharpen before, use this time to buff up, sharpen if you need to. I don't really need it because I have Handicraft 3 and True Razor Sharp, so I shouldn't actually need it, but um, never hurts to sharpen. Just checking to see if my Rock City is up again. It's not. This fight does take a while, so you could you could end up taking Tool Specialist Secret. Could maybe get two uses of a Rock City or Evasion Mantle if I had chosen to do so, but I did not. I think I force a wound right here. I do not. Just amping my sword. Okay, so now that Valkana is leaving, I know that she's around that 20 to 25% ish HP mark. I think AT Valkana spawns in with 57,000 HP, which is a little bit more than a Latreon in single player. Which sounds like a lot of HP, which it is, especially for a single person. And that's another reason why this fight is so drawn out is uh, because she also has the damage reduction. So at this point, what I would like to do is to wallbang AT Valkana, but there's no like reasonable place where she would actually be able to reach, not that I think. And I think I believe, end up going for a wake-up hit and I just fail. Uh, Switchbox can do a wake-up hit with like the, the strong hit of Wild Morph if you space it correctly, and I'm normally really good at it, but I think I fail here. It's also important to note that I, when I was hitting AT Vulcana's head in this area over here, uh, that the head was not wounded. So I already have to deal with the last like 10k of its HP uh, when it's not wounded, which will be a little bit rough. So I should have done a better job uh, wounding it and keeping up the, up the wound up time. So that's a mistake on my part already. Yeah, I'm, I'm way too close already. Yeah, if I didn't do that last nudge, I would have hit that big hit. And this is me getting a little antsy. I got pinned. I actually die here, I think. Yeah, so I got an I got antsy just for a little bit of damage or to try to to undo my mistake. And already I instantly paid for that with with a, with a card. So you don't ever want to rush rush things in this fight at all. You only just get punished for it. I pick up stone. I didn't actually need to. I already had a full thing of stone. Time to dial it back in. Don't want to get too super greedy. This is another another supernova. I just want to get underneath her. Also important to note that like once uh Volcano gets into aura of phase one, she'll start doing a bunch of these uh ice walls and like ledges, and it gets super easy to accidentally like roll onto one and then jump off, and then you like lose your iframes and get hit by moves. So it's always good to try and position yourself like away from any walls, just in general. Like you can use them to your advantage sometimes, but it's just never worth it, and you usually end ends up getting killed way more often than not. So you're this fight can get really messy. Spear into a growl, guaranteed ice puke. Tailspin into ice puke. And then it'll be the hail afterwards. Okay. This move, actually, this is the move I was talking about. 
So she kind of so Valkana will jump backwards and fan. I call this move Ice Flower because it's like I don't know. I just call it Ice Flower because it kind of flowers out like almost all the way around her, and she kind of stands elegantly. This is a move that that'll let you know that she's in aura the aura phase two because she will only do it then. So when she's in aura phase two, she will always do this move after a mini dragon a mini dragon dash. Let's see if I oh, dude. Why is this? Why is this being so stupid? Dude, come on. So this is the mini dragon. She'll do like a sidestep and a, and a little like bite slash dash forward. Like right there. So that little dash, she will always jump away and make this ice flower, assuming she's an aura two. So because there's no good way, or at least I don't know if there's a good way to tell it that when she's in aura two, I just always assume that she's going to do it. So I'll start to get ready to go towards her. Uh, or by like, a, yeah, so I always start to get ready to go towards her. But you also have to keep in mind that you don't want to instantly start rolling anywhere because you might roll into a wall or you might roll away from a wall. And those things, I I don't, like, don't quote me, but they're, they're like a pretty much well an insta one shot. So this, the, the flower move is very dangerous. You know, don't ever want to get hit by that. And the hitbox is a lot, like, like a bit, little bit larger than the actual wall itself. Yeah, so, like, this wall right here, like, I think it actually, like, stretches, like, right to the actual visual ends of this ice. So, it's really easy to, to like, be near it and still get hit by it. So, like, if you dodge this, if you dodge the dash and you get close to her, because she'll kind of, like, stand like this, and then she'll, like, pull her head back down, like, after sitting like this for a couple seconds... If you're like already right there grounded, you could do a full max DPS sword combo on her. But another thing that you could do if you were perfectly positioned is you can get a clutch claw on ZSD if you feel confident. You do have to let go if she does a dragon dash because you don't want to get pinned, but you could, it is an option that you could ZSD her. Um, I almost never take that option, but just something that I thought I'd point out. It's a very risky, high risk, kind of medium reward because even after you ZSD do a short or long finisher, you're still very likely to get punished regardless in this fight. So a long dash away. Wide sweep. These ledges are already kind of getting in my way. Getting greedy. I don't want to get hit by this because I know that'll cart me. Tail stab into growl. This is ice puke. And that's the end of the fight. A whole 11 minutes and 26 seconds. Let's see that again. Yeah, like 11.26. Yeah, you get to see how long that this this fight actually does take when you use Switch Axe alone. It takes a long time. And the only reason why I don't take my cat for all of the buffs is because it just messes with Valkana, AT Valkana's AI so much. A lot of the moves are actually only really punishable if Valkana is targeting you and you're already because you're already going to be in the position to make the punish. So taking your cat can actually end up losing you damage. I know it sounds weird, but that's just kind of the fact. What am I typing here? I can't remember. Oh, I'm like stupid iceberg. <laughs> Dude, I hate... I... Yeah, I was running this for, for hours. Just trying to figure out, for you guys and myself, uh, how to how to better fight this AT Valkana. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to end off the video right here. Um, hope you guys enjoyed me my commentary over top of the AT Valkana run. I know this video was a little bit longer. Uh, but I hope this gave you guys some good insight on how to fight AT Volcano with the Switch Axe and where some of the damage openings were. You do have to play extremely careful in this matchup because it's so easy to get hit by one thing, roll at the wrong spot when you panic, and get hit by something else. It is super easy to triple cart, especially alone. Honestly, my biggest advice is actually just to not fight AT Volcano with the Switch Axe. But if you really want to, I hope this, uh, this video was... Uh, 
was a good guide to show you where some of your damage openings were, how to kind of approach the fight, what you should be looking for. And I hope that some of the attack patterns that I was following help you translate to some solo AT Volcano kills, if at all. Anyway, my name is Skrillex, and I'll see you guys in the next video.